and so we are back at it uh, so yeah after this video I posted yesterday having fun with the Yoda everyone said when is the review when is the review I did not plan to do a review but uh, as you asked for it uh, I'm doing it so let's go <laughs> So why did I not plan to do a review? Because Vladimir did not send me this glider to review it. Vladimir did not send me this glider. It's a friend who gave it to me to test it and then I will give him back because it's his, it's not mine. So um, yeah, I just, just got it to try and have quite a few hours with it and get my own opinion about it. So, yeah, I, I will share it with you. I, I don't mind about that. So, here we go. Let's talk about the Yoda. So, the Yoda is a new glider from Vladimir's Models. Uh, it's out since April? March? I don't remember exactly, but anyway. So, it's a new type of DLGs because this is a polyhedral wing DLG. Usually, it's a single dihedral wing. Uh, on most of the LGs, but this one is polyhedral and also because it's polyhedral, it's quadro flaps. So quadro flaps mean uh, there is one flap and one aileron per half wing. So two flaps, two ailerons in total. Usually on single general wings, there is just one plank wing, one plank wing, and one ailerons, one ailerons. That's it. And we use ailerons as flap fronts also. If you don't know what flap front is, type it on Google, look for it. I will not rumble about it for a long time to explain to you. But anyway, the Yoda. So this is a new type of concept and many people ask me a few questions about it. I will reply to it uh, by order and to make the video quite entertaining. <laughs> I hope. Um, so because it's a polyhedral, uh, does it flex at launch? Is it more fragile at launch? Could it break? No, <laughs> it's Vladimir's quality. Uh, it's stiff as hell and uh, it does not feel weak at all. I launched it many times over 70 meters it doesn't move so no it's not weak you you can throw it uh, as hard as you can it will not break <laughs> so that's about the first question the second one is is it difficult to build i did not build it because i borrowed it from my friend so it, he built it um, so i will show you this is the inside of the nose so there is a bit of lead 2KST XO6 for the tails, 2KST XO8 for the flaps, push rods, and uh, there is a T2 one cell 600 mm lipo and a RX6R from FreeSky. Uh, just yeah, I will talk about that also. The wiring harness is already done for you in this glider, and I appreciate that so much. The plug here is already made, the plug in the wing is already installed. The JST um, connector is already in place and the wires in the wing to go to the servos right here are already pulled through. And this is just so great. So yeah, the installation should be quite easy. The only downside as snipes also is the T-Peg. <laughs> the T-Peg is... is I, I'm sorry, but I don't like T-Pegs. I, I will not say I hate it, but almost. <laughs> I don't like the installation, I don't like the feeling of T-Pegs because I like to have a bit of the wing between my finger. And yeah, that's, that's a personal opinion. That, that's not a thing about this glider. That's a personal opinion about every company who sell gliders with T-Pegs. Please put an option for a standard peg and just when you order it put an hard point and put a standard peg with it. It would be so great for people who don't like T-Pegs. Thank you. <laughs> so there is a T-Peg, it's the same as the Snipe 2 and uh, as we go all over the airframe 
um, the elevator throw is quite short and at first it worried me quite a bit uh, because the first time I've flown it I said oh my gosh it's soft <laughs> it's real soft and um, I made some curves some things to manage it and right now it's perfect it, it fits the glider perfectly it's really homogeneous it's the same response for all around the, the glider and as I'm on the tails um, as you can tell the rudder is just fitting so good that it's just taped there is no glue <laughs> so I think it's quite quite original but uh, it's unusual to see that but it handles just great for everything with just a piece of tape I can throw it hard, uh, I, it never moved on landings, so why not, <laughs> why not? So that's about it about the airframe, the linkage for the flaps is the same as a Snipe 2 uh, L1 push rod system, so I think it's quite good because there is never that much of play in the L1 of a Snipe 2, so I think it will be just great for the Yoda. So now about uh, the flight, because many people ask me, how oh, is it to fly it? So first note, it took me quite a bit to set up the glider, because I'm not used to fly with ball, with a quadro flaps gliders. So it took me a bit to set up and then to understand what do what in the flight uh, handling, because. If it's a bad differential for the flaps or the other ones, the bad, uh, bad snap flap for the flaps or the other ones, a bad curve for the flaps, uh, so yeah, yeah, flaps at the other ones and flaps at the flaps, curvature. Anyway, you, you understood me, I think. Uh, but yeah, to understand what do what and what does affect the rolls, the, the pitch, uh, all these things, and it took me a bit, but once I figured it out, um, this glider just give it back to you like hundred times. Uh, once it's perfectly tuned, this glider is one of the easiest to fly. But remind it once it's perfectly tuned, and I feel like this is a bit of a bad point for this glider because it's not that easy to tune. If you come from a 5J, F3J, yes, it's easy to tune because you are used to tune this kind of poly polyhedral gliders. But if you come from F3K or even simple gliders, but you feel like you want to go into F3K and uh, it's your first polyhedral machine, it will not be the easiest to tune and I feel like if it's not tuned correctly if you don't know how to set up a glider I feel like a single dihedral glider will be easier and you will perform better if you don't know how to set up a glider I, I hope it's clear but that's about the only downside of this glider that, that's about it um, but yeah I, I, I in my mind, I have the Snipe 1 in mind. The, this glider, just put any tune on it, it will fly great. Obviously, tune perfectly, it will fly just awesome, but you can have no differential, no snap flap, no flaps, nothing. Just roll like this with a 4-channel radio, and it will fly good. This glider, you can't do that. <laughs> so, yes, for me, that's a bad point. But I understood the target for this glider. This is not the target. Uh, this is pushing the limits, and I think it's well done. So about pushing the limits, uh, this glider need less ballast than snipes, and this is a good point for my elbow and my shoulder <laughs> because uh, throwing 400 grams plus gliders is not my cup of tea. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is quite great. Yeah, it don't need that much of ballast, uh, it come back from downwind really well and this is, I will 
say it like this, it's a point and shoot glider. So when you come back from downwind, just aim somewhere and the glider will just fly straight to it. It's just so stable. This is, I think, the most stable glider I've ever flown and it's quite interesting about that. So, and yeah, because it's stable, the handling in the thermal is different. But at first I did not like it and then when I saw the flight times I said okay maybe there is something to it. So it's once again when it's tuned perfectly it's super easy to thermal, super easy to understand and it doesn't move. The turbulences will not affect it as much as an other F3K which is quite good but I think that come mostly from the weight of the wing is because it's a strong one. So I don't remember if I said it, but this glider is 245 grams ready to fly. Uh, so it's not the lightest. I would like to try a lighter one, like 230 or 225 grams one with a lighter wing, because I think it could be quite interesting also. Oh yeah, and a quick tip. This glider was not handling really well until I removed the gap seal here. Okay, the gap seals on ailerons is absolutely to avoid, from my point of view at least. Because I don't know what's happening, but on every glider I ever tried, uh, gap sealing on the tips is not that great in tight turns at very low speed. Once you, I removed it, uh, it flies better. So I don't know what's about it, but that's it. <laughs> So yeah, we talked about the flight, we talked about the launch, uh, so that's and how to set it. So I think that's about it. If you have any question, please leave it in the comment down below. I try to reply to all questions, so yeah, we never know what <laughs> you have to ask. But yeah, leave it, feel free to leave it in the comment down below. If you are not subscribed, consider to subscribe. So guys, thank you a lot for watching and see you next time. Bye.